The 1600s saw a slow but steady transformation of the French army from an ad hoc collection of private levies and mercenary companies into a standing professional force who swore loyalty directly to the king. In 1671, Louis XIV issued a royal ordinance that resulted in the creation of a standardized uniform for the army left by his predecessor, Louis XIII. After 1684, this consisted of a black tricorn or bicorn hat and gray-white coat with colored linings to indicate specific units and ranks. The French infantry also made extensive use of the fusil, a light flintlock musket. This led to them being known as fusiliers, a name which stuck decades after the weapon was retired from use. Colonial French line infantry during the French and Indian War wore grey-white woolen breeches, stockings, and overcoats. Units were identified by the color of their waistcoats, while tricorn hats were most common. Many soldiers carried small hatchets similar to native tomahawks, as these were of much more practical use than swords. High-ranking officers in the French and Indian War had typically gaudy uniforms with extensive gold braiding and plumed, wide-brimmed chapeau hats in various styles. Unlike their lower ranks, they still wore and used swords, as these were symbols of the gentry. Just prior to the start of the French Revolution, the French soldier wore a white turnback coat fastened by lapels, alongside breeches and stockings. Equipment was often worn by belts around the waist or slung from the shoulder. An important and hated feature was the high stock worn around the neck, designed to keep the head forcibly erect. As stability returned to the French army, so did standardized uniforms. Many features from the pre-revolutionary period were kept, but white coats were exchanged for blue. In 1801, a new military cap called the Shako was introduced for light regiments, then implemented for all line regiments in 1807. Standard equipment included a curved saber, 65 centimeters or 25 and a half inches long for elite companies, and a 128 centimeter or 4 foot 2 inch 17.1 millimeter caliber musket. The short and agile skirmishers of Napoleon's army were known as voltigeurs or vaulters, and commonly wore green and yellow epaulets to distinguish them from the regular fusiliers. Among the French grenadiers, none were more senior nor more distinguished than the Old Guard, which formed the heart of Napoleon's army during his conquest of Europe. The Old Guard wore beautifully ornate bearskin caps with brass plates stamped with the Imperial Eagle, adorned with white cords, red plumes, and a red patch bearing a golden grenade. Their turnback coats bore an additional pair of gold grenades, in contrast to the red grenades worn by the regular grenadiers. As the Bourbon dynasty expanded the empire overseas, they began recruiting heavily from local populations. Among these were the Zouaves. Initially imported from North Africa, but eventually recruited from all over Europe, Wearing open-fronted blue jackets, Shashia headdresses, and thick baggy trousers, the Zouaves were superb light infantry and earned decoration after decoration in French service. In 1831, King Louis-Philippe established the French Foreign Legion, one of the most famous and long-lasting military units in history. Initially stationed in Algeria, the Foreign Legion was, as its name implied, intended to be made mainly of foreign recruits. Legionnaires who participated in the Second French Intervention in Mexico used the Model 1859 carbine and often adopted Zouave-style braided jackets and fezes to help cope with the heat. By the time of the Franco-Prussian War, line infantry had replaced the Shako with the much simpler Kepi, colored a bright red with blue branding and black peak. The standard uniform was also blue, with trousers dyed matter red. 
obsolete musket technology was also replaced by the Chassepo bolt-action breech-loading rifle that was among the best infantry weapons of the era. Despite their defeat at the hands of the North German Confederation in 1871, the French maintained a powerful colonial empire. While working to establish a French protectorate in Vietnam, the French Marine Infantry of the Tonkin Expeditionary Corps wore the M78 colonial helmet and white trousers with a black belt and two pouches. Half a century later, the soldiers of the French Third Republic marched into battle still wearing their highly recognizable blue and red uniforms and equipped with the M93 LaBelle rifle, the first standard infantry rifle to use smokeless powder. Unfortunately, the weapon was also excessively long for trench warfare, while the bright blue French coats made them easy targets for enemy fire. Likewise, French officers were easily identified by enemy snipers thanks to the gold trim on their kepis and gold lacework decorating their coats. After their baptism by fire, the French quickly disbanded with their bright red trousers and introduced new horizon blue overcoats. They were also the first major power to issue steel helmets, beginning with the M15 Adrian helmet in 1915. French soldiers frequently copied the British putties, or cloth wrappings around the ankles and lower legs, to help deal with the perpetual mud and blood of the trenches. As with many nations, the French Air Force began as just another branch of the army. Formed in October of 1910, it was a pioneering force in early aircraft design. French pilots wore blue uniforms like their army counterparts, but donned extremely thick wool-lined overcoats and padded leather hats and goggles before climbing into the open-air cockpits of early fighter aircraft. By the start of the Second World War, the French had done away with the blue uniforms entirely and replaced them with khaki. Infantry now wore a modernized version of the Adrian helmet known as the M26. After their defeat at the hands of the Axis, the new Vichy French government were allowed to keep a small army that was equipped with a mix of standard French gear from 1940 and German cast-offs, such as various pre-war models of the iconic German Stahlhelm. The Free French were a lot less lucky and were forced to rely almost completely on the British for supplies, resulting in uniforms more or less identical to those of their allies. To distinguish themselves from their Anglo-Saxon comrades, most Free French wore lapel badges with various symbols of liberty, such as the Cross of Lorraine. British influence on French uniform designs did not end with the Second World War. During the Indochina campaign, the Foreign Legion wore French M47 uniforms and bush hats with British webbing. The standard rifle remained the World War II-era bolt-action Moss 36, but was extensively supplemented by a motley collection of French, British, and American weapons. During the Algerian War, colonial French infantry commonly wore the MLE 4756 lizard camo pattern uniform with lightweight shoes called patugas, made from canvas or rubber. In 1978, the French armed forces adopted the FAMAS F1 assault rifle, a French-built competitor to similar weapons like the M16 and FNFAL. They were also issued Model 1978 helmet to replace older models dating as far back as 1951. Infantry uniforms remained a mixture of olive drab and khaki. To compete with similar units like the British SAS and German GSG-9, the French created the GIGN, or National Gendarmerie Intervention Group, in 1974. As an elite special forces unit, the GIGN are equipped with cutting-edge technology, and their assault teams usually wear dark blue uniforms with numerous tactical pouches and bullet-resistant inserts. In non-combat situations, they also can be seen wearing the dark blue beret of the National Gendarmerie. During the War on Terror, French troops began a campaign against the insurgency in the Maghreb region of Africa. At this time, infantry were equipped with the Falah system, 
which included a modified FAMAS with a telescopic night sight and a Spectra helmet outfitted with light amplification goggles and various other electronics. The uniform featured both hard ballistic plates rated against rifle caliber ammunition and soft protection against small arms fire and shrapnel. Although founded by Napoleon, the Saint-Cyr Special Military Academy still serves as the French equivalent of Sandhurst Academy or West Point. Officers attending ceremonial functions wear an ornate dark blue uniform with red epaulets and red or gold shoulder boards depending on rank. Headwear consists of a pale blue shako cap with a prominent red and white plume. 